Perkins, of course, driving the second mobile dealer team Commodore today. We'll be starting from position number four, also a good starter. Kiwi Robbie Francovic, a few problems there and a big question mark over Robbie at this stage. They've That's had a seven. little turbo uh, trouble in uh, practice earlier today. So we're about uh, 20 seconds away from the start of what should be a very, very interesting round eight of the Australian Touring Car Championship before an absolute capacity crowd at Lakeside near Brisbane. About 10 seconds away. Who will win the start, Richards or will it be Johnson? and racing Johnson has got it sideways and he's won the start. Richards has been gobbled up by two Commodores. Here comes the turbo and Crichton moves up on the inside and takes Richards on the inside as they run down to the carousel for the first time. We can guarantee you we have a race going now for round eight of the touring car title, the carousel. Queensland's own Dick Johnson comes out of the bend, leading it sideways and you should hear the crowd on the hill. They've all erupted. Brock, a lightning start. Perkins is next. Listen to the crowd as Francovic drops in behind them too and under the bridge comes Dick Johnson a little sideways but he's heading up to Motorcraft and leading. Johnson all pumped up and if he's going to win one round of the Australian Tour Touring Car Championship then this is it. Francovic drops back behind the BMW. Car number seven Larry Perkins in second place. Brock in third in 05. Francovic seems to have overcome the problems they had in yesterday's practice. Then Masterton, Bond in there as well. Keo, Tony Longhurst recovering from a dreadful start in the 323 BMW. Across the strike, Dick Johnson leads Perkins in second place, followed by Brock, then Jim Richards in car number 62. Oh, look at Larry. Back end of the Commodore, very taily as he came to the right-hander at the carousel. Look at Richards getting onto the back of Brock. Mustang leading two Commodores and BMW into their second lap of round eight of the Australian Touring Car Championship. Well, after that slow start, Richards really does have to get back into the thick of things early, particularly on this circuit. He can't afford to stay back in the pack and get to be in danger of being shuffled even further back. He's got to stay right on the heels of the leading division. Here he comes up now on the tail of uh, Peter Brock. At the same spot only a lap or so back, uh, he left uh, Robbie Francovic thinking. A little big squeeze there on uh, Francovic. Started off to be a little, turned out to be a big one. Down the roller coaster, Peter Brock, 0-5. And he's holding uh, third at the moment. Series leader Jim Richards behind him. Johnson up front leading it from Larry Perkins. And then back behind them we can see Rob Francovic, Steve Masters, Neville Crichton and Colin Bond. They're the next in line. There's the scrap is. Richards trying to work to the outside. Now set him up for a good pass here on the inside as they come through the bend. BMW gets up here on the inside. Brock has to give way and Richards is through. And a great drive that from Richards. Richards now is going to go chasing Larry Perkins. Richards has gone for a slightly softer compound this weekend at the two Commodores. It's the Pirelli D5 radial slip tyre, which they normally only use in qualifying, but they feel that the circuit here is sufficiently quick enough and easy enough on tyres to be able to get away with it. So the BMW I would expect to be very fast. We're checking the uh, order. Up front, Dick Johnson leads from Larry Perkins, third spot. Held down by Jim Richards, then Peter Brock. Robbie Francovic is next in the Volvo, then Steve Masterton. And I'll guarantee you that Jim Richards is trying. Not often you see Jim with the tail out, but he is trying to pull the gap back on Johnson, keeping in mind when they qualified yesterday, only a tenth of a second, the split between Johnson and, of course, uh, Jim Richards. Dick yes. finished second at this round last year in the wet, and he would desperately like to put on the big win in front of an enormous crowd here today. And I think that just about every one of them is up at the moment and cheering Dick Johnson along the way. The Johnson victory, of course, could open the Touring Car Championship right up. There's the shot as they go beneath the bridge. Just listen to the car there on full hoop as they go under the bridge, some of them sideways. Johnson, though, coming up to the top of Motorcraft. Francovic hanging in there as well in the Volvo. Down the roller coaster through Castrol. Johnson, another one. They're still hanging over the fence and out of the trees, <laughs> cheering themselves hoarse. Is uh, Larry Perkins now with Jim Richards coming up close behind him. They run down to the kink at the left-hander. One and a half seconds between Johnson and Perkins. They're leaving Brock behind in fourth place. Quite a gap opening up there. Jim uh, putting the front across the curb that time. Particularly if he's running soft tyres. 
and he's managed to pull in Perkins. A number of the leading teams this weekend have had puncture problems and they won't want to get off the circuit or there will be problems. Beneath the bridge, coming down to Hungry Corner, the run then uphill, and here comes Richards. Beautiful pass on the inside. But he lost the start, but he's made good every passing manoeuvre so far. Over the top of Motorcraft, and now there's only a little bit of daylight between this man and the fellow leading the race. You'll see the split as they come onto the start finishing straight. Johnson leading, Jim Richards the series leader in second place, Larry Perkins is third, Brock is fourth, and back behind them Robbie Francovic, Steve Masterton, Crichton and Colin Bond. Still one and a half seconds between first and second, now Johnson the man who has to try and fend off Jimmy Richards through the carousel. Well, Johnson maintains this is where he has had a real advantage on this circuit. Through the S's, down the back of the course, under the bridge, and then up over Motorcraft. Well, he's grabbing fifth gear just prior to the bridge and holds it firmly into the car, right down to this left-hander at Hungary. And I stood up there on Friday and Saturday watching practice, and it's breathtaking. To the top of Motorcraft Hill, the Palmer Tube Mills Motorcraft Mustang V8, Dick Johnson at the wheel. And now it's tumble down, Dick. Cast roll again. They had a few electrical problems with the Mustang in practice, which they've overcome very well. And the car is handling like a dream. Motor running strongly. Francovic still hanging quite nicely in fourth place behind Peter Brock. And they can see that that gap is closing between Johnson and Richards. Well, Richards has done so well uh, after being slow off the mark and in fact he was side by side with teammate Neville Crichton going into the first corner and Crichton's now back in sixth spot. Coming down to Hungry Quarter, the left-hander, before they rise to the top of Motorcraft Hill. How hard is Richard's try? Over the top. Richard's can't afford for Dick Johnson to score too many points because on the corrected table, because Jim Richards has had an excellent finishing record so far this year, he must drop his worst performance, which so far has only been a fifth as Larry Perkins gets out in the grass. So just 40 points separates them at the moment. Richards can't afford any mistakes at all. The gap continues to close between Johnson and Richards. Peter Brock a little closer to the back of Larry Perkins. And Franz Vick lurking in fifth. And they've dropped off, mastered and fighting and bond. Coming down towards the bridge again. Richard's putting everything into this. He's gaining on Johnson. There's the gap. Two hungry corner again. Trumpers try to pick a spot as we take race cam. And we'll position the camera out the back window. You can see the gap between... Uh, Johnson and uh, Richards as they run downhill. There's an interesting battle on in the smaller cars too, Mike, between the Alpha of Colin Bond and uh, the BMW of Tony Longhurst. So there's a few battles raging out there. Yes, and Longhurst's got the upper hand at the moment. He's ahead of Bond on the track. Well, this is the big battle at the moment. It's for the race lead. And Richards all the time getting closer to Johnson. I think Johnson's going to hand this one to uh, Jim on a platter. Coming out of the carousel again. Johnson all the road, you can hear the crowd on the hill, they have not stopped cheering here. Yes, Richards keeps working away. There's a sign immediately across from our commentary point that states that Dick Johnson walks on water. Well, there's plenty of it at Lakeside. <laughs> here we come, here's Richards setting him up for the pass and takes Johnson. Yes, he does. Jim Richards. Now we take race cam with Johnson as they go to the top of Motorcraft. The man that has come from behind on a couple of occasions at the Touring Car Championship has done it again here today at Lakeside. To Castrol. Richards leading. Johnson in second. Perkins in third as they come past him. Absolute full house. The There's BMW. the two Commodores back behind. The BMW is spending a lot of time going sideways at the moment. And Jim's going to be have, have to be fairly careful of his tyres in this race. Johnson's not going to let him get away. Johnson will carry him all the way. Digger said that his car will be as strong at the finishes. He hoped it would be at the start, but well, it's been 
fairly strong at the start and he's giving Jim an idea that Jim is not going to be able to take the lead and cool it for a few laps. Says an awful lot, doesn't it, for uh, Jim Richards' ability to be up front yet again in this eighth round of the uh, Australian Touring Car Championship. Car 62, Jim Richards in the BMW leads from Nick Johnson and Larry Perkins in the first of the mobile dealer team Commodores holding down third place at this stage in round eight at Lakeside. With 11 laps gone, Jim Richards continues to lead Dick Johnson and back in uh, sixth place, seventh, sixth and seventh place on the track, we've got Colin Bond and Tony Longhurst staging a little war of their own in the under three litre class. Uh, that's uh, Neville Crichton too, uh, in behind them. Just goes to show you how well these two cars are going up front. Yes, and I don't think Neville's going to be a very happy man as he locks up a back right going into the right-hander of the carousel because he needs points in this championship to be able to hold out Dick Johnson. That's the real tussle of the points table at the moment between Crichton and Johnson and being stuck behind his teammate in 323 BMW I would think is going to make Neville say a few things at the end of the day. But the two of them locked in battle at the moment as the news comes through that Peter Brock has moved to third placing in the race. But look at Longhurst. A great performance from this six-cylinder fuel-injected BMW. This could be the sleeper car, certainly at uh, Amaru Park for the next round of the Touring Car Championship. Bond doing a good job in the 26 car. Longhurst uh, has tended to be just a touch untidy on the, a couple of the uh, corners. And uh, Brighton ranged up alongside of him a lap or so ago and uh, had the had the uh, uh, the ground taken well and truly out from underneath him. We mentioned that uh, Brock was up to third, having got by Larry Perkins. I think uh, Robbie Francovic might be in the process of doing the same thing too. And up front, it's still a great battle between uh, Richards and Johnson. What a race this is. Well, there's the gap between uh, Jim Richards and Dick Johnson. It continues as we head up the hill again. We'll show you how uh, close these cars are, in fact, when they drop over the top and come down to Castrol. Richards with Johnson in pursuit. Johnson really uh, is hanging on desperately there. Cannot afford to let uh, the BMW get away too far, although he does here down the main straight, take the left-hand kink, and you can see the gap opening up. Slight touch on the brakes. Peter Williamson there in car 77, the Toyota Supra in the pits, puzzle looks. They haven't found the cause of the problem yet, and uh, he's going to be in there for some little time, and you cannot afford to be in the pits at all in these uh, rounds of the Touring Car Championship. 35 laps of this circuit, 2.41 kilometres. It's a sprint race. 11th fastest qualifier in race camp. As we follow the race lead and the squabble, it's still going on it up to the top. And, of course, uh, back in the pack while this goes on, Robbie Francovic, who is running fourth at the moment in car number 21 with some handling problems yesterday. I don't know whether Rob's been able to cure them coming down the hill in the Mark Petch Volvo turbo. Not only handling problems, but they had some big turbo hassles overnight. They had a problem with the wastegate on the turbo, which has been causing them headaches, as Peter Williamson rejoins the race. I don't think Rob Francovic expected him there. Uh, Threw a bit of dust up. They've had a complete restructure within the team, and the man who now heads the engineering side of it is Wayne Eckersley, who was associated with Alan Jones and the Williams team a couple of years ago, and Alan took out the World Championship. Since then, Wayne has moved to Queensland and worked for Bap Romano, and has now moved back to Sydney to work with Petch and head up this Volvo Assault. Obviously, there's something amiss with uh, Larry Perkins' Commodore after holding down third. Uh, team boss Peter Brock's got by him. Now, Francovic has got by him, relegating uh, Perkins to fifth. You can see how busy Rob oh. is at the wheel. No giving him a sightseeing, is there? No, giving him a super ride over the top of motorcraft and coming down the roller coaster. They were testing 17-inch wheels on this car on Friday and Saturday, and they have uh, been, as we look here through the eyes of race cam, at just how close Dick Johnson is to the back of Jim Richards, through the kink along the main straight, up to the carousel, and Dick Johnson back here with a real chance for the lead. He's jumped over the curb there, but keeping in mind, Johnson uh, said all the way along he's got a set of tyres and a car that will handle and not go off. How close do you want it, folks, in the Touring Car Championship? Mustang bounded, Dick Johnson zeroing back in on Jimmy Richards. As soon as Richards gets a little straight, the horsepower comes into play. 
but in the tricky little bits, Johnson's Mustang closes up appreciably. Here they come up, Motocraft Hill again. Richard's a little straighter this time. He's been throwing the car all over the racetrack and getting it sideways in the opening laps. And the harder Johnson pushes him in these corners, uh, the bigger toll it's going to take on his tyres. That's exactly what Johnson's working to, the game plan. Try and see if he can pressure him, make him wear his tyres, and then uh, hopefully slip by towards the end of the event. Brock and is still in third, as you can see, back behind that. Yes, and he's closing that gap. And Brock is now just 2.9 seconds behind the leading bunch. Coming up on uh, one of the Toyotas as they come out of the uh, carousel. It's part of the course guarantee to take your breath away for a moment or so. And watch Richards. Uh, yes, driver has moved across and signaled Richards through. Johnson said has gone along for the ride and once again keeps the pressure well and truly on Richards as they come up to Hungry Corner, the run up to Motocraft. Over the top of Motocraft, once again. And the gap between Richards and uh, Dick Johnson remains about the same. Open racetrack in front of them. And there's Brock, and of course, uh, Robbie Francovic in the Turbo Volvo. Not too far back. A bit of a stop-start race for Francovic. He made a lightning start, dropped back. Now he's making another move that's brought him up to fourth place just behind Brock. But uh, the real battle is right here. And Brock continues to close up onto the back of Johnson. Well, if it turns into a three-way go, won't things be exciting? Mm. There's not all that much room to manoeuvre around here. Just over two and a half seconds. So Peter has picked up a couple of tens in the last lap. Richards uh, opening a gap a little on Johnson in the last Looks lap. To me like we saw Steve Masterton's car off to the side of the track back there as well, just prior to the left-hander at Hungary. Checking placings after uh, 18 laps of round eight of the Touring Car Championship. Jim Richards in front, but narrowly from Dick Johnson with Peter Brock holding down third place. Continues to pressure Jim Richards for the lead after, oh, pressure is right, after 20 laps of this 35 lap round of the Australian Touring Car Championship. Peter Brock is getting ever closer with every lap and Francovic is right on his tail as we again take the race cam view. Johnson pursuing Richards down the main straight. Peter Brock, as I said, in third place and closing and look right behind him, Robbie Francovic. Well, Robbie's making a move. Look at this down the inside of Brock. Oh, oh Brock says, hey, shut this gate. Well, Brock knows he's got a Kiwi. Oh, and Brock has locked one up as he goes into the carousel. Don't tell me France have been grabbed over the tyre valve again. <laughs> Coming out of the corner. So Peter Brock now has Robbie Francovic right behind him. Johnson is still putting the pressure, of course, on Jimmy Richards. 2.3 seconds between second and third at the moment, so Brock continues to close on the leaders, and France a bit giving him heaps of curry at the moment. That break lock up from Brock, I hope that's not an omen. Many problems to come, because uh, Larry Perkins locked a break up uh, earlier as he went off, and uh, managed to get it back under control. Here's Brock, 0-5, leads them down the hill to Castrol. Brock under a little bit of pressure at this stage. The gap, uh, there's uh, one of uh, Brock's crew just checking the time. They'd be somewhat concerned that this Kiwi has come from nowhere with a car that wasn't handling yesterday and has been the big improver in the race. Yes, that was Neil Burns, the engine man from the dealer team who's been building very strong and fast and competitive V8s for Brock for a long time, but they're going to have to do something about these flying BMWs and Mustangs of this circuit, and indeed this Volvo, which pressures in fourth place. France of it getting right behind Brock now, putting the pressure on. Beneath the bridge. Despite uh, some handling problems, uh, Robbie's done uh, a heck of a job in this race so far. All concentration is Francovic. Oh, he says, come on, Peter, if you can't cut the pace, let's get with it. Now, that would have upset Brock no end. There's not too many that can stick a, a bit of a car into Peter Brock and say, you're ha holding me up, and I think that that'll either stir Brock on, no end, or Brock's going to make this the widest lake side that Robbie Francovic has ever seen. And there'll be words between these two after the race. 
maybe they're not great lovers. There's Ken Vajit with problems, car being uh, taken back to the, uh, the pit area. As the scrap continues, coming up on a slower car. Well, this is one area where Brock might get just a little breathing space. He's, no, not at all. Francovic dived straight through the gap as well. And Colin Bond in fifth placing in the GDB6 Alfa Romeo at present. Yes, and um, Neville Crichton has displaced Tony Longhurst as well in the, in the leading division. Here we go, over the top of Motorcraft. Last time they were a bit closer than that, particularly the exit. So Brock holding down third. Study of concentration in the 05 Mobile Team Commodore. And Francovic closing up behind him. Johnson still in second, and the race leader, of course, is Jim Richards. They're coming up on uh, Jim Keogh. Melbourne solicitor that's been uh, following uh, the trail very, very successfully. And leads the STP Rookie of the Year award so far. And that gap between second and third is now out to 4.1 seconds. So uh, Peter Brock is dropping away from the back at the moment of Dick Johnson. Larry Perkins, who was holding down third place in the race at one stage in car seven, is now back in seventh place behind Tony Longhurst, behind Colin Bond. To hungry corner again, Francovic is very hungry. Is very hungry indeed, right behind Peter Brock to the top of Motorcraft. They were both gaining on Richards and uh, Dick Johnson at one stage. Now they've settled down to have their own private uh, duel. I think they've taken uh, a little of the heat off the uh, race leaders who you can see disappearing away down the front straight. Two great duels going on here, Richards versus Johnson and Brock versus Francovic, but on the track, it's Jim Richards still leading after 25 laps of today's round of the Touring Car Championship from Dick Johnson and Peter Brock. Johnson still running second and keeping the pressure, of course, on race leader Jim Richards. Been a very busy time, that's why we haven't worried Dick Johnson, but Dick, can you hear us? Yeah, mate, I can hear you. Don't want to interrupt you. Uh, with about seven laps to go, do you think there's a chance here you might be able to pull it? Well, you never know. It's, uh, it's got to the stage where his tyres look a bit slippery from here. You said earlier you thought your car would be as strong at the finish as it would be at the start. You still hold to that? Yeah, well, it, uh, hopefully it will be because uh, everything seems to be fine at the moment. The water's on 180 and uh, the oil pressure's up around 80 odd pounds. The brake pedal's there. All right, I think we'll let you go, Dick. Good luck. We'll let you get back to the race. Oh, mate, it's those Kiwis. That's the problem. Yeah, well, the problem is Robbie Francovic's running fourth at the moment as well. So, uh, you know, the Kiwi's doing reasonably well. Mate, that's why I won't let them near me new ICL computer. Why's that? Because there's too much liquid paper over the screen. <laughs> Go back and chase Richards. Thanks, pal. Bye. So, Dick Johnson, still with a one-liner in the middle of the fight. Richards at this stage has uh, a little bit of a uh, gap on uh, Dick Johnson. And there Brock it is. Looks like he's pulled one on Francovic too. Yes, Brock, uh, a couple of car lengths over Robbie Francovic as they wind down into the final uh, five laps of the FM 104 Round 8 Australian Touring Car Championship here at Lakeside. What a race it's been. Brock goes through as Johnson uh, tries to set up a late charge now on Jim Richards. Still plenty of time for things to happen in this race. Five laps now, in fact, uh, remaining. Gap Johnson to Brock is now 3.8 seconds. So it fell away to greater than that and is now coming down again. There's Brock. One, of course, uh, the opening, uh, his opening uh, race for the series at uh, Sandown in uh, February. Had some problems at a couple of the other races, managed to pull a quick time, went to uh, the race at Keylor, was very, very competitive. Mike Quinn just pulled off the circuit in the background in the Toyota Sprinter. Brock's just come back from uh, a two or three week trip overseas, having visited Europe and America and believes he has some uh, good bits coming. <laughs> He's lost a good bit too, off the left rear there. There's the front running four in the race, Brock third, and of course Robbie Francovic back there in fourth in the silver Volvo. As far as the Queensland race supporters here today, let me tell you, it seems like there's about 20,000 of them here. They obviously want that man in 17 to take the lead away from the man in the black car, and that's Jim Richards at this stage. 
as they swing down the back part of the course. There's Johnson working again and trying to pull back that uh, deficit. Larry Perkins across there on the right side of the racetrack with obviously some problems and slowing. Coming up on one of the slower cars to the top of uh, Motorcraft Hill. And Richards, very, very comfortable indeed in the black BMW. Russell Worthington indicating that he wants Richards to go by on the right-hand side. So Jim at the moment looks to be reasonably comfortable. It's a question now of who's got the best sprint left in their tyres. The gap is 0.8 of a second. And Jim having a security tap on the brakes just to bring the pressure up before they come to the right-hander of the carousel. Well, three laps maybe two and three quarter left to, to go for Johnson to see if he can put some pressure on. There's Larry Perkins with some problems in the pit area for a tyre change. Yes, yeah, so well, that's a little unusual. Larry opted for uh, Dunlops earlier this morning. Yes, it's them again on the car. So perhaps a different compound or maybe the opportunity now to do some testing. Wayne just gets the front left back on. No, Larry's out of the car. So it's terminal. Well, they were going through the exercise, perhaps, so they have a problem there. So Larry Perkins drops out. This man has it, though. Jimmy Richards, 62. Leads back onto the straight again. Coming down to the line with two laps remaining in the eighth round of the Touring Car Championship. That time through Jim Richards extending the lead to 1.8 seconds. So 1.8, the gap with about one and three quarter laps to uh, run. Looking very, very strong at this stage is Jim Richards. The car looks to be a little more stable on the road now than it was earlier. Well, the car has responded well to uh, the demands placed on it by Richards, who really had to use it to throw it around the racetrack to come back from fourth. He did that very, very successfully indeed. Heading up uh, Motorcraft Hill, and Jim Richards in 62 will drop down on the approach now to Castrol Corner. Still with that same gap over Dick Johnson. Peter Brock in third. Robbie Francovic is fourth. And Colin Bond, of course, in fifth place. Uh, Neville Crichton in sixth. Across the line with one lap remaining. 62 driven by Jimmy Richards, the JPS BMW, heading down to the carousel for the final time. Now the brakes, gets it set, it's the balance right for the turn and comes out of the carousel. Very clean. And rough on highs from uh, Jimmy Richards, the man who's dominated the Touring Car Championship Series so far. Goes beneath the bridge, dropping into the left-hander, coming down to Hungry Corner, then the approach to the top of Motorcraft Hill. Johnson has given the fans here today a race to remember. Uh, felt the pinch against the BMWs on some of the other circuits, but has put up a first class showing here today. Down the roller coaster to Castrol for the final time. Tucking into the right hander. Check a flag at the ready as they come down the straightaway. Dick's got a little bit sideways, but across the strike, the checkered flag will come out. So Jimmy Richards goes on to win round eight of the Australian Touring Car Championship, narrowly from Queensland's Dick Johnson, Peter Brock, and New Zealander Robbie Francovic. Quite a race between the front-running four and a marvellous scrap between the 62 driver and 17. Let's recap the placings for you. Round eight, the winner's gone to Jim Richards and the BMW. Second place to Queensland's Dick Johnson. Johnson, and third place to Peter Brock. It's confusion. You can hear the shouts and the cheers after the running of today's round of the Touring Car Championship. And that remarkable man, Jim Richards, has done it again, defeating Dick Johnson with Peter Brock in third place and Robbie Francovic fourth. And we're going to try and get a hold of uh, Robbie Francovic to talk to, first of all, because he certainly, once again, as we've seen before in uh, his Volvo, been able to give Peter Brock some hurry up to the mid stages uh, of the race. And I guess uh, he'll have a few words to say about it, as will, no doubt, uh, Peter Brock. Dick Johnson, well, he did pursue relentlessly once more after he lost the lead to Jim Richards but you can take nothing away from the man in the flying black BMW because uh, once he regained the lead after a slow start he certainly did it very very well indeed Robbie Francovic has uh, joined us looking very much uh, worn out that was a pretty tough race pal yeah well it's the best I could do under the circumstances 
under the circumstances, you were knocking on uh, Mr. Brock's rear door quite a bit there through uh, about lap 20 to 25. You actually thought of Calder at that stage, and I thought, mm, better not. <laughs> well, I thought of it too when I saw a puff of smoke from a Did small you? brake locker. But... <laughs> no, that wasn't a small brake locker, but that was me putting him sideways at the top of the hill. But I backed off. You, uh, you had one or two harsh things to say about the, this circuit, but you look like you've enjoyed yourself. I enjoy all my motor racing, no matter where it is. Where to now with the Volvo? Uh, we're going to do some testing between now and Amaru, so that's going to be great. Great race, and uh, I know fourth place is no consolation, but uh, congratulations. Thank you. Peter Brock. Hi. Another man with a little bit of work to do. I think these blokes have just about got your measure, mate. Oh, they've well and truly got my measure. I've got to fight back. Uh, there's no doubt about that. You, you get a car with 300 horsepower, but make it run at 1,400 kilos. Uh, you've got to have everything spot on if you're going to race with them. And I think today our car was really spot on. It was just uh, beautiful to drive. And, uh, you know, I, I, it responded, whatever I did. At the start, teammate Larry uh, out-jumped you, and you really had to fight hard there uh, to, to claw your way back. No, 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 no. <laughs> he, had, he had sprint tyres on, I had long-distance yeah. tyres on, as simple as that, and, uh, I, I, you know, it's just a matter of uh, his tyres doing four or five laps uh, melting, and uh, I just continued on. Having said that, do you think uh, you might have now, in, in light of that, made a different uh, tyre selection? Were you banking on sort of being obviously closer at the finish? The race, therefore, should have been a little longer for you. I can't have any choice. I mean, yeah. I had to put on the tyres that would do the job at this track, and uh, they did the tyres admirably. As I said before, I don't think I could have got my car set up any more perfectly than what it was today. It was absolutely fantastic as far as I'm concerned. I, I believe that uh, uh, you'd have to judge Larry Perkins' car mm. against mine to say, well, there's one that's uh, uh, running beautifully, uh, and there's one that's uh, not quite right. And the, a lot in it. the start was spectacular from anybody's viewpoint, but from yours, uh, it must have been spectacular as well. This bloke was sideways. Dick Johnson down the track. Yes, uh, Jimmy Richards was uh, um, slow off the line, as we sort of predicted, as a, you know, being a smaller engine uh, car without the torque of ours. But, uh, yeah, well, look, I just looked at that and thought I've been caught too many times at Lakeside through... Uh, uh, traffic and, and uh, stones on the track mm. and what have you, so I just played a little bit cool. Big effort for third, congratulations. Ben. Thank you, it was a big effort and I congratulate Neil Burns and the boys for uh, giving me a, a magnificent car for the job. Talking about big efforts, come in Carl. Oh, well, gee, you pushed hard all day mate, but it, uh, you just couldn't hold him out there. He blew the start again, but again he's been able to reel uh, the people in. Mate, I got a boomer start, it was probably the best start I've had all year and uh, you certainly need it here. Mm. And, uh, you know, it's just that the, the BM is going extremely well. You know, our car is going very well, but it's uh, a little bit short of the old straight line speed in certain parts of the track. You catch him and in certain parts he leaves you, but it's, it, was a, it was a real fair race and a good race. Pre-race, we spoke to you and you told us where your advantages were going to be on the circuit, and that's certainly where you were knocking on his boot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, actually, I knocked pretty hard once, I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is, you know, completely unintentional, but... Uh, yeah, my mind is not his mind, so it's very difficult sometimes to ascertain exactly what they're going to do, and he was on the brakes a bit too long, and maybe I wasn't on him long enough. <laughs> Yesterday you said if we can't win here, we can't win anywhere. Well, not until the end of the touring car rounds. Uh, Amaru could be a damn good show for us. Uh, our car will handle that circuit pretty well, I feel, and uh, providing that uh, our tyres hung in pretty well today. If they hang in pretty well at uh, Amaru, I reckon it'll be a good race. Tyres were the key. Did you expect Jims to go off a little more, perhaps, than they did? Well, you know, like, I've seen his tyres come off that car with, with the biggest blisters, like they, they had more warts than a frog on them. <laughs> and, uh, to be quite honest, uh, the thing still hung in. And, obviously, the, they've got their act together with the compounds of the tyres, and, and they're hanging right in. And, boy, I wish I had the same. Says a lot for his ability too, doesn't it? Oh, like, the guy is tremendous, you know, he drives extremely well, he's a very fair driver, and uh, actually gave me a bit of surprise, I didn't think he'd knock me off where he did. <laughs> okay, let's talk to the man, congratulations Dick on second place, Thank Jim you. Richards. This is becoming a habit, a very nice habit for you, I guess. Yes, it is, yeah, it's very, very good. Uh, maybe we had a trouble-free race apart from uh, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> Again, the start was the hardest part for you. Yes, no, I thought I uh, thought I got off reasonably well, but the the clutch just stopped a little bit too much, and it wouldn't get the the power through the engine to the wheels. So I had to back the throttle off, which then the motor bogged down. Of course, it it all goes from there. But uh, fortunately, we were able to just sort of sneak past them where we could and um, catch up to Dick. When you say slip past them where you could, you did a pretty smooth job of that. Well, there's only a couple of a couple of places you can pass, 
and you have to be sort of reasonably forceful, I suppose, and slip into them when they when they uh, become available. And that's mm. what I did. Mm. Uh, apart from Dick Johnson, I guess you really didn't get too much of a view of the action that was going on behind you because uh, the field was pretty well spread out uh, once you got to the front. Yes, no, well, Dick and I um, had a great race. So had I made a... You know, like a small mistake, he would have been passed. Uh, in actual fact, I did make a mistake, and he never yeah. did get passed. But maybe one of the keys to the race was the first corner, and I think he went into it side by side with uh, teammate Neville. Did he back off an inch just to make sure that you got through without any trouble? No, no, no. It's uh, there was room for two cars, and we just both went through there, no problem. Congratulations! We've had eight rounds. You've won six. Um, there are two to go. Can you maintain this winning record? Well, I hope so, but they're making it hard. <laughs>